Hello friends! Santi has been traveling a lot. His first trip was to Portugal when he was about 7 months old. It was also his first flight and he asked us to share with you the steps and some tips to make your trip as easy as possible. We have also decided to set an Amazon page so you can see what products does Santi use in his everyday life and during his travels. You can find the link in the right upper corner or in the description below the video. So how did we do it? First we went searching online. There was a lot of information and we were a bit confused. What you will definitely need is to get your pet an ISO microchip. You won't be able to travel in Europe without it. You will also need to have the rabies vaccination administered at least 21 days before the travel. If you are from the EU, your pet just needs to have an EU passport. Your veterinarian can issue that for you. This passport then contains all information about your pet, number of your microchip, vaccination dates, etc. Should you be from another country, outside the EU, you will need a health certificate from your veterinarian, which includes the same. This certificate, however, should be issued within 5 days prior to arrival to Portugal. Airline requirements Now each airline has different requirements for pets. TAP Air Portugal allows dogs which are at least 10 weeks old. If they travel in cabin, they cannot weigh more than 8 kilograms, including the carrier. And as for your dog's carrier, the official maximum dimensions are 40 to 33 to 17 centimeters. It is almost impossible to find a carrier with such dimensions. We instead use this one with the dimensions of 40.5, 30.5 and 19 centimeters. So it is very close to the actual limit and no one else will really measure it. Making the booking. When making our booking, we have chosen the possibility to have a seat with more legroom, which was also near to the boarding doors. But it turns out the standard legroom seats are fine too. We took those on the flight back. Unfortunately, with TAP, you cannot pay for your pet online and have to call their service line. They will ask you about the breed, age and weight, and the carrier dimensions. Now, if your carrier is slightly bigger just like ours, tell them the allow dimensions. It will be easier and they won't check it at the airport again. The payment is with a card over telephone. We recommend checking with the customer service prior to purchasing your ticket, whether there is allowance for dogs on board on the particular flight you want to take, since there is a limit on how many dogs can be in cabin each flight. Taking an afternoon or an evening flight is your best option. Your dog will be naturally tired the later in the day it gets. We had a 6 hour flight, but altogether with the time at the airport, it could be almost 9 hours. At the day of the flight, we gave Santi a slightly smaller ration in the morning and did not feed him during the day again. We also rationed his water intake a bit during the day, so that he won't drink too much. Just before going to the airport, we had a long walk and then we washed his feet a bit so he smells nice and is clean. It's great to take some pet food with you and also some water for the flight. Oh, and don't forget about a pee pad or two. We also recommend bringing some wet tissues. Arriving at the airport, we did the check-in first. You must do that even if you do not have other checked luggage. That's because they want to check your pet passport and they will weigh the carrier with your puppy inside it. It takes only a couple of minutes and you are ready to go. After that, we recommend having another short walk outside the terminal building and then head to the security control. For the security check, you will have to take off your dog's harness and collar and take him in the hands. Then just pass the detector with him as per the officer's instructions. Most European airports do not mind when your dog walks around on a leash, so we definitely recommend it since he will spend a lot of time in the carrier later on during the flight. And finally, we are boarding. Now once you have your seat, you should not let your dog out of the bag. Additionally, for the takeoff and landing, the carrier should be under the seat in front of you, but it will not really fit, so just keep it between your legs. After the seatbelt sign is switched off, you can put the carrier on your lap or perhaps even on an empty seat next to you if you're lucky. And we did break the rules here. Yes, we let Santi out of the bag. Our flight that day was half empty and the cabin crew did not mind at all. We were very lucky. On our flight back we were not allowed to do that anymore, so we at least put a hand in the carrier to pet him. But don't worry, as long as you have something like an antler to keep your dog occupied, he will be just fine. Also, mid-flight you can feed him and give a bit of water. Once you arrive in Portugal, if you are coming from the EU, you will just pass right through and exit the airport. Should you be coming from outside the EU, 
a brief veterinary inspection will be necessary. But since you already have all the documents in check, it will be fine. And done! Bem-vindos a Portugal! It might feel a bit overwhelming, but flying with your dog is really no big deal at all. Thanks for watching! Hope you have a good flight and see you again soon!